In the previous episode of Hijack, we saw that an unknown person had handed over a folder to the Home Minister on which the word, demand, was written. The Home Minister had no clue what was happening on Flight KA-29, and he called the Foreign Secretary, Lousy, to ask what she knew about the issue. The Home Minister went straight to the Counterterrorism Department, where the Foreign Secretary was having a meeting with Zara and others. The masterminds on whose orders the hijacking was being carried out demanded the release of two convicts, Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown, who were currently serving their sentences in some prisons in the UK. The perpetrators threatened that if the English government did not fulfill their demands, then all the 216 passengers on the flight would be killed. The Home Minister made it very clear that unless and until he knew that the perpetrators were actually killing the people, he was not going to adhere to their demands. Meanwhile, in Dubai, Nila's neighbors got suspicious, and they informed the police that something was not right in their neighborhood. Nila was the same woman who had been coerced by the perpetrators to let their men board the British flight with weapons. Later, when she went to her house, she was killed by the two men disguised as cleaners. The police came, and the woman living in the neighboring house told them everything she knew. She had seen the cleaners leaving, and her intuition told her that something was definitely not right. The police went inside and found out that Nila's entire family had been murdered, and soon, the news got out and was covered by the various local media houses. One of the people in Zara Goffer's department saw it online and informed everybody about it. The Home Minister got the evidence he needed, and now he knew that the masterminds of the hijacking were capable of killing the passengers on board. Daniel O'Farrell had found out the address of Lewis and Stewart's mother by tracking the call that had been made from the flight. He started his interrogation, hoping that she would give him some details about the hijackers, but Elaine Adderton blatantly told Daniel that she wouldn't be able to help his cause. Elaine was petrified of the people who were behind the hijacking, as time and again, she told Daniel that she was not doing this willingly. Elaine told Daniel that her husband, Peter, had been killed by these people because Lewis, her son, had not followed their orders. One thing that came out of this entire scene was that the hijackers were as petrified as the passengers. Stuart Adderton and his team were told what they were supposed to do and what would happen if they failed to follow the orders and acted smart. The kind of stress the hijackers were under was quite evident by looking at them, and that is why Sam Nelson was able to take advantage of the situation and play with their minds. Elaine told Daniel that these people would come after her and probably after him too. Elaine went inside the room to bring tissues and took the opportunity to escape from the house. Elaine frantically ran to the highway and was probably run over by a vehicle, while Daniel and his colleagues stood there as mere onlookers. This act by Elaine made us realize how dangerous these people were. Even before they said anything, Elaine got so paranoid that she gave up her life. Meanwhile, on the flight, Sam Nelson devised another plan after he realized that Anna Korvax belonged to Hungary and the plane was soon going over its airspace. Sam Nelson was an observant man, and because he was such an exceptional negotiator, he held his cards till the very last moment and never let the other party know what was going on inside his mind. He saw the flag of Hungary on Anna Kovac's badge, and he drew it on a piece of paper and asked his fellow passengers which country it belonged to. Once he got to know about it, he got up and told Stuart that they needed to land the plane in Hungary as Lewis desperately needed medical assistance. Sam had figured out that Lewis and Stuart were brothers, and he knew that Stuart would do anything to save him. The doctor had told Stuart that Lewis' condition was stable, but Sam told him that he was lying because he didn't want to reveal the actual state of things. Stuart knew how manipulative Sam was, so he told him that he would ask the doctor himself. Sam and Stuart were having this conversation near the business class, and the doctor had no clue about it. In reality, Lewis' condition was actually stable, but Sam wanted the plane to land at Gürper Airport so that the local forces could intervene. Sam knew that there was a phone in the compartment where the doctor was standing and where Lewis lay on the floor. Sam told Devaya Khan, the air hostess, to immediately call and tell him that he had to say less than one hour to whatever Stuart was going to ask him. The time was so short that Devaya was not able to give any kind of context to the doctor, and Sam knew that his plan would backfire if the doctor told the truth. But luckily, the doctor understood the signal and told Stuart that Lewis had less than an hour. Sam had already told Anna Kovacs to talk to Hungarian air traffic control in her native language so that the hijacker wouldn't understand what she said. Terry, Jamie, and Jaden were against the flight landing, and they vehemently asked Stuart not to do so. But Stuart was adamant, and he was not ready to listen to anybody because the life of his brother was at stake. Towards the end of the hijack, Sam got to know about something that changed his mind, and he asked Anna Kovacs not to land in Hungary. 
Terry took Sam aside and told him that the people who were pulling the reins were extremely dangerous, and they could hurt the families of not only the hijackers but Sam Nelson's as well. Terry told Sam that they had given his passport details to their bosses, as they were told to do so in case anyone tried to act smart. Terry told the same story that earlier Elaine had told Daniel about how Lewis had refused to carry out their orders and the bosses had decided to kill his father. Terry said that he was the one who was asked to kill Lewis' father, and that is why he knew what they were capable of doing. Sam Nelson wanted to save the lives of the passengers, but he was not ready to put his family at risk. Even Lewis, in that state, murmured that they should not land, and Sam realized that if a man who was on the verge of dying was saying that he didn't want to be cured, then the people who were running the show were actually quite capable of destroying anybody's life. Lewis died in the end, and Sam told Stewart that he had taken out that pen himself, though we have doubts about it. Sam said that Lewis gave his life so that Stewart didn't feel the need to land, but we believe that it is possible that Sam himself took out that pen so that he could convince Stewart. The two men who had asked for Sam's address from Marsha in the previous episode of Hijack reached Sam's house. Sam's son was in his house at that time, and because he saw them taking out their guns, he hid inside the bedroom. We will get to know in the next episode if they were able to find Sam's son or not. In the sixth episode of Hijack, the British authorities realized that they had no other option other than agreeing to the demands made by the hijackers and releasing Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown from prison. The strategy was that they were going to slowly try to buy as much time as they could so that they had a better understanding of what was happening. Meanwhile, Sam Nelson kept on using his skills and in influencing Stewart, but neither Sam nor the five hijackers knew what was going to happen next and were just depending on their instincts. A man named Devlin gave a call to Felix Staten, a journalist, and asked him to meet him immediately if he wanted a big scoop. Devlin told Felix that the shares of Kingdom Airlines and Macmillan Doyle Insurance Company were going to collapse very soon as Flight KA-29 was hijacked. We believe that Devlin was surely going to benefit from this entire deal, and he told Felix that the market should get to know about it in the next 30 minutes or he should be ready to face the consequences. We don't know if Devlin was working for Edgar or not, but after Felix left, he did give a call to some unknown person and told him that the work had been done. Maybe just getting Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown out of prison was not the only thing that these people wanted to do, and there was a bigger picture that, until now, nobody had been able to see. Devlin knew about what Felix had done in the past. Felix had been involved in a scam involving insider trading, and up until then, nobody knew about it. Devlin threatened Felix that if the news wasn't out immediately, it wouldn't take him long to bring his corrupt practices to light. Felix tweeted about the hijacking of a Kingdom Airlines flight, and soon people got to know about it. Neil and Louise, back at the counter-terrorism headquarters, didn't know how it had happened, and they realized that if they did not act quickly now, the hijackers might get the better of them. Neil might have said earlier that they would comply with the demands of the hijackers, but in reality, he had no intention of doing that. There was an additional tracker planted inside the car that was driven by Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown, apart from the one installed on their phones. Edgar dropped the phone midway when he realized that he was being followed by Daniel. He stopped his car, came to Daniel, and told him that if he got to know that his movements were being tracked or that he was being followed by police officers, he would order his men to start killing the passengers on board. Edgar encountered a roadblock, and he lost his temper. He called Daniel and told him that if he didn't get it removed, then people would die, and he would have only himself to blame for it. Daniel tried convincing Zara and others, but they wanted to go ahead with their plan. Edgar turned his car around and took an off-road that went through a farm and connected to the adjoining highway. Zara and others were able to ascertain that both convicts were going to the nearest airport, where a chartered flight was waiting for them. Now they didn't want Edgar and John Bailey to escape before the hijacked flight landed in London. That's why they were trying to block their way and make sure that they were somehow stuck on land. Edgar's car reached the airport, and the commandos present there surrounded them on all sides. But to their horror, Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown were not in the car, and they had somehow managed to get down midway and change vehicles. Edgar had taken that off-road intentionally, as there was already a car parked there for him and his companion. They took that car, and now, nobody knew where they were or what they were up to. In dangerous situations like the one that happened on Flight KA-29, we often feel that the perpetrators have everything under control and that we are the ones who are having the panic attacks. But time and again, Sam Nelson proved that if one acted smartly in these situations, they could get the better of the criminals. At the end of the day, even the hijackers were human beings, and they also felt like relying on somebody who they could trust. Sam Nelson had already won their trust, and now he was in a position to tell them how to go about things. 
Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown had been released from prison, and they had explicitly told the police officers not to follow them. Zara Doffer had asked Daniel and Erica to keep track of their movements, as she somehow undermined their authority and what they were capable of doing. Edgar contacted Stewart on the flight and asked him to kill one passenger and send in the image so that he could show the police officers that he meant business. Stewart didn't want to kill anyone, and Sam knew about it, so he took his chances, got up, and told Stewart that he didn't have to because he had a way out. The hijackers had already killed a woman earlier, and Sam managed to convince Stewart to send her picture, as Edgar had no way of knowing that she had not been killed right now. Stewart did that, but Sam knew that at any moment, another demand of such sort would be made, and the hijackers would be compelled to shoot and kill another person. Sam realized that there was no other way, and they would have to wage an all-out attack on the hijackers and take the plane under their control. Sam circulated an empty bottle after marking a tagline written on it that said, get ready to shake things up. When Edgar encountered a roadblock, he asked Daniel to immediately get it removed if he didn't want another passenger to die. Zara's plan was that she would somehow stop Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown from reaching their destination until the time flight KA-29 landed in London. But Edgar was in a hurry, and he took an off route while telling Daniel that now the blood of another innocent passenger was on his hands. Edgar once again messaged Stewart to do the needful, and an observant Sam realized that the time had come. Stewart pointed a gun at Sam, but Diva Khan, the air hostess, came at the right moment and convinced Stewart not to kill him, as he had tried to save his brother's life. Stewart started shouting frantically, and he told them that one of the passengers would volunteer to be shot. Stewart didn't know what he was doing, and it was as if he had gotten an anxiety attack. Sam and other passengers took down the hijackers one by one. Sam confronted Stewart and asked him to give him his gun, as he knew that it was the only gun with actual bullets on the plane. But Sam was extremely wrong, as, like Zara, he had also underestimated what Edgar was capable of. Apart from the five hijackers that everybody knew about, there were at least two more people on the plane who were with Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown. Seeing the situation get out of hand, a woman named Amanda got up from her seat and went directly to the restroom. She took the gun that was kept there, came out, and dashed towards the cockpit. Without even batting an eye, she shot Robin Allen point-blank and locked the door of the cockpit behind her. Sam realized that a bigger problem was at hand, as even the hijackers didn't know who these people were. They had about an hour before they landed, and Sam knew that if he didn't do anything about it, none of them would be saved. As we move towards the end of season 1, we would get to know if Sam Nelson is able to save the day or Edgar proves to be a better schemer at the end of the day. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and I hope you enjoyed the hijack episodes. We will meet in next video.